your girl, Lexi Wilson, coming at you live on a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny Chicago day. This is the second day of sunshine that we have in a row, and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really excited. But today, I wanted to talk about something that maybe doesn't feel so good, but I love this topic because I personally struggled with it for years. I'm no longer on that end of the stick, which feels good. Yes, yes, yes. But it took a lot of time and it took a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of sacrifices to get from point A to point B and I'm feeling good about it. So I thought I would share with you guys some of the things that I've learned about how to deal with like um, work stress and how to be positive when you're in an environment that doesn't feel that good. Because the reality is, is that for a lot of us, we are working minimum. 40 hours a week if you're like me you were working like 60 right hi Caroline oh my gosh I haven't seen you in so long how are you <laughs> but yeah if you're anything like me you are you are at least minimum minimally working 40 hours a week and uh, maybe more and you're miserable you're stressed out you're undervalued you're underpaid okay and you're not feeling really good the majority of your week and if you know anything about energy, you know that if you're not happy, right, you're gonna attract more to you to make you feel unhappy. Does that make sense? If you guys agree with me, put some hearts down, all right? Hi, Jennifer. Hey, girl, how are you? <laughs> So we want to shift our energy so we, instead of spending 40 plus hours a week being absolutely miserable all the time, where we're starting to shift to maybe just not ecstatic about your life, but at least a little bit happier, right? <laughs> so you can attract more happy things to you, you know? So I wrote some notes now because I'm a studious girl. <laughs> so I'm going to get my notepad out here. And let's get started into some of the ways that you can start to think positively about your work situation. Number one, and this is going to be something that everybody knows, but it, I mean, we got to say it, you have to practice gratitude. It's so hard, so hard to be grateful when you spend a lot of time in a, in a space of like, I hate my life, I hate my life, I hate my life. So I know that number one is the hardest step to take, but it is a, such an important step because when you start to shift your mindset into this space of thinking like, you know what? I should be grateful that I even have a job. There are people out there right now who aren't making this money at all. Even if you're only making 14 bucks an hour, I have been there, okay? At the end of the day, there are people who are at home who are going, why can't I just get this job? Why can't I figure out what to do? All of that. There are people who are wishing that they could have that opportunity to get that paycheck. You have that opportunity. Or maybe you're not grateful for your job at all. And you're like, you know what? This isn't for me. I truly have no sense of gratitude for this job. What else in your life are you grateful for? Start to list those things out every morning when you wake up and every night before you go to bed. And I'm telling you, you'll start to feel better and you'll start to recognize like, okay, you know what? Even though I don't like my job and I don't like where I'm at, maybe you don't like the environment, too much office gossip, ugh, been there or whatever it is. At the end of the day, I still have all these other things that I'm blessed with that I'm grateful for. And when you have that attitude, it makes your life a lot easier, I'm telling you. So think of a time, I'm sure you can think of a time maybe when something awful happened, maybe there was a car accident, maybe there was whatever, and your mind starts to shift into like, oh, thank God that we did this instead of that. Thank God we wore a seatbelt. Thank God we did this. You went into gratitude and it allowed you to process a very negative event. I've been in a car accident and I know what that feels like where it's like, of course you're thinking like, oh my gosh, my car, oh my gosh, this, oh my gosh, that. But then I also thought, thank God I was wearing a seatbelt. Thank God that I was here. Thank God. And I, I stopped at this place and not that place because it would have been worse. Thank God that blah, blah, blah. You know, you start to think differently. And when you do that, all of a sudden it shifts how you feel about what's happening and you can process things a lot easier, which puts you in a better space to move on to number two, which is taking responsibility. Because at the end of the day, if you hate your job, if you don't like that environment, you don't like your boss, you don't like the, the company, you don't like their values, it doesn't align with you, at the end of the day, you're choosing to work there. We all have a choice. We can choose to leave these jobs or we can choose to stay. Now, a lot of times it doesn't feel like we could choose. Hi, Raquel. <laughs> it doesn't feel like we can choose. I was there. I felt like I couldn't choose this job. I mean, what am I gonna do, leave and then I can't pay my loans, I can't pay my rent, like what am I gonna do? But when I started to tell myself and I shifted my perspective to realizing like, wait a minute, I can take responsibility for this. I have a choice here. I could choose to walk out. Now the consequences of that are that I won't have enough money to pay for my rent. 
Am I okay with that consequence? Do I wanna move back in with my parents? Do I wanna get a roommate? I did that for a while. You know, I decided that it was like, what are the consequences that could come if I choose to leave the situation? So I'll share with you guys, I used to work in social work. And <laughs> when you work in child welfare, good Justine, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Good hugs to you, girl, because I've been there, I totally get it. And when I worked in child welfare, uh, you were working with sometimes, not all, but sometimes people who can be violent or be mean and they don't like you, right? <laughs> because you're coming in at a time where they're feeling really vulnerable. And I got attacked and I, I, my company did not support me in the way that I felt like they should have. And it could have went so much worse, so that was me practicing my gratitude, but it was bad enough. And I decided I can't stay here because it's no longer a safe environment. Now this job is not only something that I'm tired of dealing with because of the office gossip, I'm tired of the office politics, I'm tired of being put down and being underpaid, but now I gotta worry about my safety too. It was a really hard decision for me to make, but without having a job ahead of me, I put in my resignation. I chose that because I recognized, you know what? Even though this means that I'm not gonna have the money that I need for rent, I gotta find another solution because I'm not gonna sacrifice my body, <laughs> you know, by getting hit or getting hurt, harmed uh, just for a paycheck. Like, I'm not gonna do that, right? Everything ended up working out in the end. I found a job and it, I actually went straight into temp work. Uh, you, you, you do what you gotta do, you know? But by me recognizing that I have a choice, I could leave this job, I could search for another job. It gave me my power back. Or I could stay, at, I've done this before too, where I've worked another job, I hated that job. But I chose to stay until I found something else because I was like, even though I hate this job, I could make it through. I could make it through. All right. So remember that you, you have to take responsibility for the fact that you are there because it feels like a punch in the face when I say that. But what I'm trying to say is that when you recall the fact that you have a choice, it gives you your power back so you could start to think like, should I be looking for another job? Should I be maybe looking maybe even for um, like a role in this job where I can be more influential. Hi, Jamie. That's my middle name. So, hey, sister. <laughs> but maybe there's something else. There was one job that I had. You guys, I've had a lot of jobs that I've hated, okay? I've been working since I was 15 years old. So, I, I have been around the block a couple times, all right? <laughs> but I had one job that I absolutely hated, right? The position. I didn't mind the company. I didn't even mind my boss, but the position itself was not at all what I thought it was going to be. I took responsibility for that. I recognized like, I don't like this position. So you know what I started doing? I reached out to one of the girls in HR and I started asking questions. Hey, what other jobs are open? What other jobs are available in the company? Cause I liked the company. That's a choice that you can make. You can decide like, is there someplace else that I can work within the company? Or maybe that's not something that you wanna do. Hi, Bianca. Maybe you're like, it's not that I want just another job. Maybe I want a promotion. What can you do that can change? Because I know for myself, one of the problems that I had with the job I had um, was that I just felt like I wasn't being worked the way I wanted to. I love responsibility. I was really creative. So I knew I could solve more problems than what I was being given because my role kind of undervalued me. So instead of complaining about it and being like, oh, they never use me. They never listen to me. They never this, they never that. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Facebook is asking to tag my college roommate in this picture, which I freaking love. <laughs> But yes, instead of being like, oh, well, they never, which I did do that too. I did complain and I was like, they never use me and they never do this. But eventually I was like, you know what? Why don't I just tell my boss, like, I want another, like, I want to work in this capacity. I want to be used here and I want to do this and I want to do that. Hi, Michelle. And it worked out amazingly because I was qualified for the position. My boss knew that I wasn't exactly happy with the position I was in and she knew that I could handle that other position. So she offered that to me and I was much happier after that that. So take responsibility, you guys. Either one, change your situation, leave that company, leave that job. Two, look into uh, other roles within that same company. If you love the company that you can fill, you know, take responsibility, you guys, you can do this. All right. Let's see what Justine says. She says, I like that idea. Knowing you have uh, a choice can shift the power relationship relations. Yes. And it's so true. That's why it's like, sometimes, um, Whenever you're stuck in a situation where you're not happy, instead of telling yourself like, I can't believe I have to do this, or why do I always get stuck with this sort of stuff? Say, 
I choose to do this. Because at the end of the day, most of the decisions that we make, even the ones where we feel like we don't have a choice, we do have a choice. It's just we don't want the consequences. Like, I don't like doing laundry, <laughs> right? But I technically don't have to do laundry. But the consequence is that I will not have any clean clothes. If I'm okay with that, I mean, there's people out there who are okay with that and we smell them a mile away. <laughs> They've made their choice though and they're okay with that. I'm not okay with not having clean clothes or wearing dirty clothes. So I have a choice. So I choose to do laundry, even if it's not my favorite thing to do, but that gives me my power back. Do you see what I'm saying? So I, I hated a job that I had, no problem. But you know what? I choose to go into that office every day to make this dollar, honey. <laughs> right? So take your power back. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And the last thing that I want to share is little things that you can bring to your office and little things that you can do. So one of the things that I did was number one, my lunch break was my meditation hour. I ain't hanging out with none of y'all because I don't like none of y'all. That's how I used to feel. <laughs> No, I had a couple of coworkers that I liked <laughs> at one of the jobs that I had. Um, but um, there was one job I had where I pretty much didn't like anybody in my office. They all gossiped a lot. They caused a lot of issues. And I was just, I just could not, I didn't even like hanging out with them because I knew that like, if I hung out with so-and-so, then this girl over here is going to think that I'm gossiping with this one. And then she's going to think I'm on this person's side. So I was like, you know, I don't like none of y'all. Okay. I'm going on my lunch break. <laughs> Right? And it was during that lunch break that that was my meditation hour. I would go sit in my car and I would just meditate. I would put on a YouTube video and watch like a guided meditation. I would center myself, you know, so I wouldn't kill nobody at my job, you know? <laughs> Or I would listen to a podcast during that time and just kind of zen out. But taking time away from the office, listen, if you have the opportunity to leave your desk during lunch hour, please do. I know that not all of us do that and we not always, uh, not all of us can have that luxury. When I was working as a counselor, I didn't always have that luxury. Sometimes my lunch breaks were literally 15 minutes between a session. So I really couldn't have left. But what I would do during those times is I would take a break. I would go walk up and down in the stairwell just to get my body moving so I could just feel like I'm doing something else. I would stare out into the window <laughs> so I could feel like I was outside. Good, Michelle says she does this too. Yes, I love it. I'm telling you, you guys, this can make like do wonders for your mind and get you through the next hour or not next hour, the next couple of hours, the next shift of your work shift, okay? So doing those little things, getting your body moving, taking your lunch break, going out, <laughs> you know, makes a big difference. And some other things that I did is I had crystals around my desk. Like I was that chick and I was okay with it. Most people didn't really get it. So they just figured it was just pretty stuff, you know? And I'm like, and I'm weird. Cause I'm like, I love Disney. So I would have like Cinderella pictures and like all this other stuff. So it, you know, it was kind of crazy, but it was cute. And for me, because I understood energy, I knew that for example, I'm wearing my rose quartz uh, bracelet right now, right? This is supposed to send me good positive vibes, good positive self-love type of energy, right? So I had a rose quartz uh, rock on my desk. I had a amethyst and I had obsidian. And I would keep those things around my desk because it just reminded me that I'm always protected. I'm always like, I can choose whose energy I'm gonna be affected by today. And I remember one time without even thinking about it, my boss, who I didn't like at the time, she came over into my cubicle and she's talking to me. And I had my bracelet, which was an amethyst bracelet at the time. And I was like, I was, she was like, pretend like you guys are her, so you guys are in front of me. And she's talking to me and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. That's great. I love that idea. Fantastic. Okay. Now the funny thing about this was that amethyst is known for a transmuting energy. So it takes negative energy and it kind of turns it into something positive. Physically, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just kind of nervously playing around with my bracelet, but by me putting that in between us, it was almost like I was saying like energetically, like, yeah, put your BS into this because I'm not taking it. Yeah, <laughs> Kiki, um, yes, put your BS into this. You know, <laughs> but it was so 
so funny because it was like a barrier between her energy, which was very like all over the place, and my energy where I was trying to stay positive and trying to stay in a good light. So doing those things, and even if you don't believe in crystals, hey, it's a pretty thing to have around your office, and physically, it can just remind you, not physically, mentally, it can just remind you, like, I'm trying to stay in a good space here. I'm trying to be in a good space. So I hope that these tips help you. I, I love to talk about this particular issue because of the fact that I struck most of the jobs that I've had, I've had a couple of really great jobs, but I've also had my fair share, especially coming from social work, of jobs where it was like, oh, this is hard, <laughs> you know? And so it's hard sometimes to like deal with that and to cope with that. And I don't think we talk about it enough. We don't talk about the stress and the anxiety and how to physically get through your work day. So I'm glad that I was able to kind of give you guys encouragement. If you have any questions about how, like other tips that you can use to try to get through your work day, just DM me and I'll try to give you everything that worked for me. And I'll talk about probably in another video as well. But I'm always open to sharing what's worked for me so you can kind of stay encouraged and empowered especially since some of y'all are probably watching this from your work right now. <laughs> Justine says, this was so helpful. I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, but not at the level where I can fully support myself. So this was awesome. Oh, mwah. good. I'm happy, girl, because I feel you. I did that too. I, I literally, I had my side hustle and I worked, this, worked that job until I could finally they gotta get onto this other side where everything is now changed. And if that's you too, and you don't have an opportunity and you're like, I do kind of want to work from home and I want to learn more about that. Of course you can just DM me as well. And I'll give you what you need to make a decision. There's no pressure. But if you are that person that you're like, you're kind of like Justine and I, and you're like, I kind of want the option. I just don't know what else is out there. Then just DM me. But Justine, hang in there, girl, because you will be able to eventually replace that income so you can be able to do what you want, work from home, do lives in the middle of the day, all of that. It took me years, you guys, years to get here. But the point is, I still got here. It still happened. So don't give up on yourself just because right now life is difficult because life is always going to be difficult. You might as well keep working your dreams until it starts to manifest. All right. So thanks so much for joining me live. You guys, if you know somebody who's struggling with their work situation, hi, Dina, my sister. <laughs> if you know somebody who's struggling with their work situation, go ahead and tag them or share this video out. So that way they can take a chance and look at it themselves and see if it's encouraging and helpful for them as well. Have a wonderful and amazing day guys. Bye.